Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the opportunity to speak here today. My name is Theo Colin Moose. I've just turned 17. Of course, I like being treated as an adult. But as a legal child, today I am speaking to you as a child. I would like to address the policy, policy makers in this building and beyond. I have grown up on a small, uh, a small island, five kilometers off the west coast of Ireland. Our offshore community of Clare Island, population 150, is already suffering the effects of the climate catastrophe in a very real and frightening way. Winter storms are wilder, summer droughts are longer. Extreme flooding is more and more frequent. Alarmed by the increasing evidence all around me, I have become a climate activist and a school striker. Not because I want to, but because I have no option but to be one. Since January, I have been organizing strikes nationally as part of Fridays for Future Ireland. And I strike every week in front of my local government office. Usually there are just two of us, myself and my 13-year-old sister. Last Friday, as I, as I made my way to Madrid uh, by sea, my sister was striking alone. Except she was not alone. My sister was joined by other young people striking in solidarity all over the world. On Friday, September 20th, there were seven and a half million of us. My sister was alone on her street, but half a million of us marched through the streets of Madrid, demanding climate action. Not because we want to, but because we must. We are climate activists because we care. I possess enormous privilege in even being able to come here, in being able to raise the money in having the support of my family. I am honored to be here, standing in solidarity with my fellow activists. But I am not happy to be here. My colleagues would say the same. I am saddened by the glaring omissions. There are so many who should be here, but who aren't. Indigenous people and activists from the Global South have been fighting for far longer than I have and they have the experience and generate generations worth of wisdom that we should be listening to. And yet we cannot hear them because so many of them are not here because they were not given the opportunity to be here. Does it not trouble you that the same lobbyists who are destroying our planet are given VIP treatment and can buy their way to these negotiations? All the while those who are doing the most for all of our collective futures, sometimes risking their lives, cannot make it? We are striking because we are frightened, and we are also striking because we are angry. Normally adults mind their children. Normally adults make sure that their children don't do anything stupid. Normally adults help their children to avoid putting their futures at risk. Unfortunately, the adults today are doing the exact opposite. I did not come to, to the COP25 to see shiny pavilions or to hear about the placement of brackets in non-binding declarations or even to speak about the climate crisis. I came to Madrid because the adults are acting like children. The adults are discussing whether a meeting should be called a multilateral, a bilateral or something else entirely while our planet literally burns. For 30 years, you and people like you have sat around tables and talked and talked and talked. You have promised much and you have delivered very little. Today, people are dying. Children are dying. If you were to ask me to sum up everything that is wrong with the climate crisis, I think I would say that. Children are dying. So today, we are asking you, please, please listen to us. Please listen to the science. Please sign the Declaration on Climate, Youth and Children. And please, take us seriously. The politics of the past will not get us out of this crisis. 
Einstein once said, you cannot solve a problem with the same mindset that created it. Your failure is a failure of imagination. So please, I ask you again, listen to us. Listen to the science, imagine a better world, and start to act like the grown-ups in the room. Thank you.